This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> Our thoughts are psychological. They really aren't the truth. They're a bunch of mental constructs you've bought into since your youth. Most things we do unconsciously, we learned them as a child, conditioned by what our folks disliked and that which made them smile, knowing which are their voice and knowing which is mine. Only from that discernment place can we know that we're divine. Ian. Valeria interviews Ian Segal. He is the author of The Emotional Resilience Pathway, a practical guide to cultivate emotional resilience, overcome fear, and manifest your dream life. And Who's Controlling You? The Doris Program. A seasoned mentor and inspirational guide with a passion for helping others achieve their full potential. Author of 14 books, for the last 25 years, Ian has been helping companies and people all over the world optimize their impact and increase their ROE, return on effort, by improving themselves, their mental models, their sales, and their marketing systems for increased engagement. Ian's work involves helping people to transform their work efforts and achieve the results they truly want for themselves and their businesses. Using his vast array of expertise, know-how, and proven methodologies, Ian helps people find their joy, ease, and flow so that their efforts bear the fruit they choose with less struggle and stress. Meet Ian at iansegale.com. Here's the interview with Ian Segale. In your own words, who is Ian Segal? I'm recognized probably in Australia as, as, a, as a leading sales strategist and, and authority on marketing, especially in the B2B area because I've been doing it for so long. But one of the things that I've been working on, one of the things that I see that um, gets in the way of typical sales and marketing people is the real estate between their mind, between their um, ears. And so the work that I've been doing and uh, probably the most important work that I'm doing, not only for others but on myself too, is in that space of our thinking, uh, how to think more effectively, uh, not just critical thinking, but how to really uh, think clearly without getting involved in our triggers and uh, and, and all the things that get in the way of us achieving what we want. And so that's really what I've been doing for the last 25 years. Since then, I've written a number of books. Uh, and um, I, I work mainly as a mentor, a leadership mentor, and, uh, and a transformation coach, really. And that's the work I've been doing probably as a transformational coach, probably the last... Uh, five years or so. Right. Wow. What's not to love about that is focus on how to think clearly. That's a, a very interesting area to focus on, to have a conversation about. When it comes to thinking, I, I wonder how much of our thinking is really ours. In general, do we really create our thoughts? Or we just become aware of them and then assume 
that we are thinking them? Yeah, such a good question. The fact is, um, since we were, you know, uh, since we came onto this planet as little children, uh, we have been programmed by our socialization, conditioning, uh, you know, from the moment, from really from the moment we're born, we taught colors, we taught what is a zebra, or, you know, what's mum, what's dad, what's good, what's bad. And so really our, our thinking isn't truly ours, it's just a sum of all the programs we've been programmed with. And while many of those programs are good and they help us get through this 3D world that we live in, many of them are dysfunctional. And our problem is, is that we get hooked into the dysfunctional programs and these programs or these thinking habit loops, as I, I call them, um, they roadblock us, they take us off track. So, um, you know, I was uh, <laughs> putting a, uh, a, a newsletter together the other day and I thought, well, you know, how come we, especially this time of the year where people you know, um, set news resolutions. How come we fail at that? And, and the reason is because of our thought loop patterns and we don't have any awareness of them. And even if we did have an awareness of them, we have no effective way to, to shift them because they're so ingrained uh, right from when we were children. So really, good question. Are our thoughts ours or are they intergenerational even? Yes, yeah, coming, as you said, from programming, limiting beliefs, trauma, right. That's so fascinating, though. You know, I think perhaps the fundamental question is, which I always ask in the very beginning of all interviews, who are you? Who am I? I think my answer to that question, attempting to answer that question, in my answer this one, too, about what thinking is really ours. But really, we needed to understand what we are, perhaps not even who we are, but what. That's always my main interest, going as deep as I can when it comes to identity. Who am I? The closest I can get and I can explain with words is I am life itself. I don't have a life. I am life. So if I am life, I'm one with everything that exists, existence itself, then who is thinking? <laughs> who is doing all the, the thinking or the taking actions? Life itself. Well, is life doing the thinking or is life doing the, the growing and expanding? Mm. Ah. Yeah, because, is there a difference, right? It, what's the difference well, between yes, them? Because, you know, does a tree think how it should grow? Mm, yes. The tree just grows. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, does yeah. a dog think, oh, I need to I need to go outside and do a wee? No, it just mm. uh, it gets an impulse to go out, you know, to go mm. and, and do mm. what it's trained to do. Mm. Uh, and even trees get trained to grow in a certain way because that's where the light is, because there's other trees around them. So there is a certain element of uh, molding that, the 3D world creates, but in terms of thinking, that's a uh, that's a mental structure. That's uh, that's what we. It's one of our gifts. Unfortunately for us, is that uh, we. It's a bit like think of it like this way. Um, we have our spirit, our soul, our higher self, um, but really our mind is um, the puppet. Is the is and what we've done is we've. We've put the puppet in, we've made the puppet the puppet master. And so our minds are actually running our lives, where in fact our lives are already running and our higher self it just sits back and watches and says, okay, well, mind, you just keep doing what you're doing, your identity. And as we just said, you know, identity comes from our, our programs, our thoughts, our beliefs, and who says they're right? I mean, can, can, you know, if you look at all the turmoil going on in the world today, you know, and it doesn't matter which side you choose, where are those thoughts? What are, what, what, where's that from? The genesis is in our thoughts, and, the gen, and, and our thoughts come from our programs. So even if we went and said, okay, well, all this wokeness 
Um, that's just a, uh, well, you say A, and I'm going to say B. You say it's black, I'm going to say it's white. But was that really a true choice? Or is it just a way of, you know, saying, well, screw you, I'm, I, I don't want to be um, held to account. I don't want to be held to responsibility for or for whatever reason, and so people just uh, choose the opposite or, or choose to go with the program instead of stopping and evaluating and saying, well, what do I really think? You know, but we don't because we don't have an awareness that we are not our minds. We think we are. We think we are our thoughts. And as long as we think that we are our thoughts, well, what can you do with that? Mm. Wow, Ian. It's so, so true. Yeah, that's a big one to really realize, not to be understood again, because the mind takes hold of everything and trying to own all those ideas, concepts. But yes, I love the, the example you gave about a tree, about nature. It's only, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't need thinking to, to flourish to accomplish what needs to be accomplished, to be what it is. It just does it. Because they are in harmony with the big picture, this, I would say, this underlying essence of that holds all together, which from my perspective, mm -hmm. not just mine, I'm a student of Advaita Vedanta. So it's one essence, one ground of existence, not two. So that mm -hmm. makes so much sense to me. I guess even the idea of choice, you know, the... That changed for me too many years now, probably, I don't know, 10 years. I just, at some point it shifted where, where I don't, there's no, this, there's no sense of an entity choosing something. It's just like you said, coming from a place of programming, which it might be almost like not just constructed, but fixed. It's almost like this operating from a place that is, has been always, always the same, which is, very much he opposes life itself. It's that's always moving, always moving toward, I would say, harmony and balance. It's it, and it's interconnected too. To clarify or to describe this experience a bit more for the audience and myself, I guess the question that I'll ask you is how do we learn to distinguish between thoughts that are uh, let's say stagnated, constructed, programmed, and the flow of thinking, we can say that it's freed. It, it is in, connected to the whole of life. Mm. Okay. So let me use a, an, an analogy here. Imagine that you, you've got people coming over for, for afternoon tea and you go onto YouTube and you see a beautiful recipe for a chocolate chiffon cake and you decide you're going to make that cake you get all the ingredients out and you put them all in little um, bowls and you put them into the mixing bowl and just as you're about to put the salt into the mixing bowl there's a ring on the doorbell and it's the amazon man anyway you come back and then you're eating the recipe and it's and even though the recipe says a pinch of salt you misread it because of your distraction and you put in a tablespoon of salt. You mix it in, you put your cake in the oven. When that cake comes out, it still looks perfect, but is it still a cake? In fact, it's now a salty cake, and it doesn't matter how much icing you put on it, it doesn't matter if you cut it in the middle and put your favorite jam or whatever in between, it's still, the cake itself is still gonna be salty, isn't it? And so as, as human beings in our first five, six, seven years of our life, so many of our programs and our thinking modalities are built in. They are, they baked in. You, you, you can't mm -hmm. unbake what's baked in. You can't take mm -hmm. the salt out. Mm -hmm. So if the salt is baked in, it's then become, having to become aware, ah, oh, okay, that's my salty cake being triggered. That's why I'm doing, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's not, that's why I, it's just having the awareness. And that's the, being aware, paying attention to what's going on 
And the best way to pay attention, the best way to see, in fact, what's going on is look at your results because your results come from your behaviors. Mm. And where does your behavior, where do your behaviors come from? Mm. Your behaviors come from your thoughts and your emotions. Mm. So if you're not getting the results you want, then you've got to, or you almost got to go back and say, okay, well, hold on a minute. What are the thoughts? What are the emotions that triggered this behavior? And that's where we start to go, ah, oh, okay, that's my salty cake. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does. It really, really does, you know. And I talk to a lot of therapists here, and this idea of of he, being healed never really resonated, being a destination for healing when it comes to deprogramming. So basically what you're saying is that we cannot undo programming. We can only become aware of them. Well, you know, it's, it's like... Um... It's like a computer, you know, you, or take your, you take your, take an iPhone. You know, you can't take a, an iPhone 10 and compare it with an iPhone 14. You can't even upload the same program anymore because that, the, 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 the programs are inbuilt. Mm. It's the default. But it's not about – we all have default programs that are dysfunctional, everybody. It's about recognizing them and then going to work to change them. And this, it starts with awareness. If you have no awareness, but the best part is, is that the 3D world will tell you, where you what's going on because your results, your results can only come from your behaviors, Valeria. Where else can it come from? So your behaviors And your behaviors come from your thoughts, your emotions, and your beliefs. So if you just track it back and you say, okay, am I happy with my results? I'm overweight. I can't build relationships. Uh, I don't have financial abundance in my life. Great. Don't fight against it. Just understand that that's a result. Now, what are the behaviors that I'm doing that are contributing to that? And therefore, what are the thoughts and beliefs that are contributing to those behaviors? They built in. Right. It really, really resonates true to me. And I love seeing the big picture and I love going as deep as I can. What comes to mind is the idea of being a body in the first place. I remember questioning that when I was really young. What is this? Now, what am I doing here? And mm. who am I? Mm-hmm. So all these questions I used to ask at a very, at a very young age kind of informed my entire life, just going deeper and deeper, and spirituality especially. For some reason, science, not for some reason, it was, Mm. I I don't know why exactly, but of course I was inclined to go spiritual because of, because my environment. I was born in Brazil, Mm -hmm. so that all my environment would naturally take me to that direction. So Mm -hmm. when I think about the body itself, it, it feels already as an imperfect, incomplete, <laughs> un, unhealed, or something that's it's temporary, just coming and going. It's so obvious that it's coming from some sort of misunderstanding, mm-hmm. spiritual misunderstanding, that we are something that we are not. So I guess that already, if we, if we can understand that, that we are not the body, we are not the mind, as you said, we are not thoughts, then everything changes. It's something shifts. In my case, it is the sense of wholeness. I feel complete because I'm coming from the realizations was of what I am. So it's never whole, but what, which mm-hmm. is infinite energy. It's, it's limitless. It's everywhere. It's not just here in this placeless place place here and now. So there's something about that, realizing that, seeing the big picture that makes everything else kind of, I would say, playful. And that's how I see anything that looks incomplete, broken, like as you said, about not really being able to reprogram because we are, um, it's innate in a way. To me, it's already mm-hmm. innate. Being in the body is already something that you can't change. But it can become meaningful and playful. I, I guess I, I feel so much more alive now 
that I know in a way that I'm not something that could be labeled as life. So I am life and death at the same time. Okay, so we, we, which is which is a wonderful way to think and and to live. But then you step back into your your world, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a a, a sick child or uh, somebody cuts you off in traffic, and bam, you're back into your programming. Mm. So even though you have the sense that you're part of something bigger, you are not your mind. You're not your body. You know, you didn't, um, this is just a, a meat suit, if you like, to carry you through this, yes. <laughs> uh, this, this life experience. Um, and even though you, you know that, we get triggered because we live in a 3D world and all of a sudden we're back into our programs. And until and unless we can actually start to unpack those programs and get and recognize, ah, oh, okay. It's my salty cake again. Yeah. And this is where, you know, uh, therapists talk about, yeah. you know, peeling the layers of the onion. And there's always yeah. another layer to peel. You know, I'm, I'll be, I've just turned 65. And mm. by golly, I still put my foot in it. I still, put, you know, say, I can't believe I just said that. Or I can't believe I just did that. That's how deep mm. the stuff runs. Yes. And I absolutely agree. But you see, and there's something about, even accepting the unacceptable and being open to the salty cake, as you say, it's kind of funny. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like having a piece of that and like, ah, it doesn't taste right. <laughs> but, and then almost in that moment, being present enough to know that that, that is the salty cake, you know, it is the something that I cannot change. A hundred percent. Something 100 happens correct. that too. Yeah. <laughs> It becomes more fun, more playful, I guess. Then we become more open. The mind becomes more open to solving mm -hmm. what is perceived as a problem in a in a lighter way, without without getting you know over stressed out or I don't know sick or, or all those things. <laughs> yeah, so, I, that that's has been my experience. I know it's something that it's not easy, right? It's said than done. It's a practice, well, isn't it? It's it's not. So can you imagine? Imagine if you. Uh, you wore glasses, and your glasses were a strong yellow tint. And you went through life with your yellow tinted glasses. If if I was wearing a blue T-shirt, would you see my T-shirt as blue with your yellow glasses? Mm. Yeah. Well, no, you wouldn't because yellow nice. and blue actually makes green. So for the, your whole life, you go through and... People are saying, can't you see it's blue? And you're going, what are you talking about? It's green. Because until and unless you take your glasses off, you will never be able to see blue. And it doesn't matter how many people tell you it's blue. It doesn't matter whether you <laughs> – there's no proof. You cannot, you cannot be shown it's blue. And you think everybody's crazy until you eventually think you're crazy because everyone's saying it's blue. But you just see it as green. And the only way you're ever going to see it as blue is if you take off your glasses. And, that's, and that comes down to having the awareness, the awareness of, oh, I've just bitten into my salty cake again. Mm, again, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So from your own life experience, from your own lived experience, living experience, is that something that do you feel that becomes, let's say, the salty cake, it starts to taste less salty at some point, even though you are eating it, <laughs> but you are so aware of it now that you have accepted that, that taste. Mm. Is there a point where, you know, it's not, as I mentioned before, that there's a, that high level of acceptance and peace where, ah, it's okay to be what it is. That's, I think you've just nailed it. You've just nailed it. It's just about surrendering. And if you mess up and if you step into, into it, you just go, oh, okay. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever read the poem by Portia Nelson? Uh, my Life in Five Chapters. Ever read that one? I think I heard about it now that you say, but I don't remember. So I'm just going to paraphrase and I'll probably mess it up. But anyway, so she's this wonderful poem by Portia Nelson called My Life in Five Chapters. And she says, chapter one, 
I walk down the street, I fall in a hole, and I'm lost. Chapter 2. I walk down the street, I fall down, I fall into a hole. I look around, and I can't get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the street, I fall into a hole. I look around, and I climb out of the hole. Chapter 4. I walk down the street, I see a hole, and then I walk around the hole. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. Mm. (laughs) Yes, I have heard this before. Yes, I didn't know. I forgot the title, but yes. And that's really what it, and that's that's exactly what happens. Mm. It's just like, oh, Uh, okay. uh, I just choose not to do that anymore. Yes. And then it becomes choice. And so now we use the salty cake as a means to inform our choices rather than just default them rather than just act automatically to them. We go, oh, okay, it's just an old program. I now want to choose what I want for me, not what others have chosen for me. Mm, yes. At that um, at that level, yes, what a, a beautiful process to go through of recognizing, right, the programming. It, it's actually... It's incredible how every time I recognize a piece of those programmings, it's just so, I don't know, yeah, but for me it has become, because, maybe because of the realization, the groundness of knowing that I'm life itself and I'm mm-hmm. whole, there's nothing, there's no mistakes here. Something happens, happened and it still happens where, yeah, th- sometimes there's that trigger at the level of the body and I feel mm-hmm. the heart, the heart rating, the heart's beating faster and there's something in me that sees all that happening but it it doesn't get caught in it as that's right or you let it go quicker yes right yeah it it sometimes it does though yeah it does but not at the level of let's say getting angry or using you know words that are inappropriate words that doesn't happen anymore i'm sure it did before Oh, uh-huh. I was so programmed that it was just sad even when I think about it. When mm-hmm. it comes as a memory, it's very sad, the disconnection. It has been not just peaceful, but fun to explore the experience of body-mind being finite and not perfect in any way from a place of perfection. And being okay with that. And it's, yes. it's about being okay with whatever shows up. So if you do mess yes. up... Yeah. <laughs> you, you just let it go and you just say, yeah. okay, and then you learn from that. The trouble is unless we have the awareness that it's actually, it's not out there, it's actually in here, because as long as you're saying, well, it's your fault, you triggered me or, uh, you know, they doing it to me or the environment or the conditions, as long as you, f- your focus is externally focused and you're saying it's, ha- it's happening to me, well, then you're just a victim And then you can only respond as a victim. But when you actually say, no, it's inside of me, now you can start to clean up your mess. Mm, Yes, yes. And it seems to me you've done a lot of mess clearing because otherwise you (laughs) wouldn't be where you're at. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) That's for sure. A lot of that. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. still doing it. (laughs) But in a fun, in a light yeah, in That's a light right, way. because now <laughs> when you do step into the pool, you go, oh, I've just done it again, and you let <laughs> yes. it go quicker. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's it, Yeah, Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, once you have realized this, um, which I have seen, it's, you can't unsee it too. I know you talk about programming. It's really a hard one to deprogram, and it's true. And I do believe that and feel with, within my own experience that from that perspective of body-mind, it can't nothing can be done. It's almost mm-hmm. like a karmic thing. You can't really do anything about it, but just become aware. And as you said, more and more kind of, it's almost like a distancing of what we are from who we are, what we have become as body mind. So <laughs> what happens is, because we talk about the body mind, the mind produces chemicals. So let's just talk stress, right? We get stress chemicals of adrenaline, neuroephrine, uh, cortisol. And what happens is the mind sends these chemicals into our system as a result of our 
of a trigger. Now, the trouble with these chemicals is that eventually we start to get addicted to them. So now we actually go out and look for the stress so that we can get our chemical hit because ultimately we want the dopamine hit that comes from the chemicals. And so that's why people like to live in a stressful environment. But but when you in when you're filling your body your, with with these chemicals, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and you're not um, you're not you're not changing the chemical structure through things like meditation or mindfulness, where now we're introducing lots of serotonin into the system. Um, yeah, we're still stuck, not only mentally addicted, but we're now physically addicted to our behaviours. Mm-hmm. And so that it, it keeps us locked. So when you start to just surrender, which is which is so beautiful, which is what you were talking about, which is just surrender to what is, understand, ah, okay, I've just taken a bite of my salty cake. That's all it is. And then go and apologize if you've messed up, apologize to whoever it is, and and just move on. Mm. And you know, and that's and that is you know, as I say, for me, that's been the, the biggest thing. And and I would say probably for you too, is quickly recognizing and then moving on because it's not who you are. It's just what you've done. And what you've done is just a function of, like you say, your identity. And where does your identity come from? It comes from your programming. But it's not, you are not your programs. When you, when you were first, when you were a baby, did you have programs? No, we learned them by, uh, we were taught them by carrot and stick, by smiles and tears. That's how we were taught our programs, carrot and stick and smiles and tears. And if we, you know, if, if mum came and she was smiling and, uh, and we just wanted that physical connection, we knew we were on the right track. But if there was a, if there was a frown or a no or a, a vibe, tone, a, you know, an angry vibration, all of a sudden we knew and we felt unsafe. Well, we're on the wrong track. And slowly but surely we build up these programs and, um, it's not about, as I said, those programs are built in. You're not going to get rid of them. Uh, many psychologists might tell you otherwise. My view is I've worked with so many people over the years. It's not about getting rid of the program. It's about recognizing, ah, oh, it's my salty cake and I mm-hmm. am not it. I am mm. not my programs. <laughs> like you say, Valeria, I'm, a, yes, I'm like bigger. That. I'm part of nature. I'm part of life. Yes, so I am Live life. through that. Yes. Make choices from that place. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. It, and even, I know you mentioned part of it, but it's really, I am that. I am life. I am mm. whole. So it's it's really beyond being part of. I know that, you know, when I think about, I don't know, so many people say different things. Thinking about life as a body, so there's the whole body and then everything else within the body are just the parts. But ultimately, it's everything is life, is that body. Like my hands, my everything, my heart is, is my body. I cannot mm-hmm. say that it's just part of my body. Without the heart, then it wouldn't have harmony, it wouldn't flow. Mm-hmm. So it is. Yeah, so everything, which is not even a thing. And, you know, I love, I love the idea. I really appreciate what you do too. You do talk about depth. And I love truth seekers. That's what it is, you know, truth, um, explorers. That's where magic happens from my perspective. Mm-hmm. It's being, being open enough to go as deep as we can. So when you talk about programming as children, you know, what comes to mind is what about what some people talk about, which relates to soul, you know, that we already come here with certain karmic imprints. Mm-hmm. So we can't really, or soul contracts, I hear that a lot too. Mm. Do you take that into uh, consideration too, Ian, when Absolutely. within your work? Absolutely. <laughs> if you, you can't be spiritual if you don't. Can I, I, I'm just busy writing my second book as a follow-up to the Who's Controlling You. And the, the very first chapter, I, it, it, if you like, um, it's just yes. a, it's a little poem yes. that I've written that explains yeah. exactly that. And if yes. you give me a minute, I'll just uh, I'll read it to sure. you. Sure. Yes, it's please. Called, it's called The Bus Stop. 
Now, this is pro- um, it might be very confronting for many of your listeners, mm. but it mm. explains exactly what you just said, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's called the bus stop, and it goes like this. Standing at the bus stop, waiting in the queue, watching all the others there, nothing else to do. Listening to their stories, engaged in their requests, why they want to go to Earth, and what they want to test. Someone seeks forgiveness, someone else seeking love, looking to learn compassion as they beg the source above. Requesting to learn the lesson the 3D world can teach, the tougher the tutorial, the harder they beseech. Asking God to show them how, entering a life of pain, how else could their soul expand without them learning shame? I need to learn forgiveness, please. Well, that's a hard one to learn. For you, you'll have to sit by and watch as your kids and your husband burn. Oh, you'll survive the accident. Your family will all die. And you'll be fueled by revenge and hatred focused on just one guy. Because he'll be the drunkard who'll smash into your car and he'll kill your family driving home from the bar. And your lesson is to forgive him, forgive his awful stumble. His lesson will be even harder. Forgive himself and humble. Is there anyone at this bus stop who wants to volunteer called the wise old angel? Anyone want to steer? You'll be the driver, the one who kills them all. You'll be the boozer. You'll take the fall. You'll have to surrender the lesson of letting go, and you'll learn grace and faith, and you'll expand your heart and grow. Do I have any takers? Asked the angel once more. Surely someone wants these lessons. Isn't that what you signed up for? I know the teachings will be harsh if you go along this path. You'll be subjected to disgrace, to infamy, and to wrath. But you'll learn the lesson, and boy, will you expand just like those wise old souls who truly understand. A journey like no other, you'll be the villain. You'll be the one to drive and kill those passengers, a deed you can't outrun. You'll be a witness to her suffering, her shame and your disgrace. And her lesson is to one day forgive you to your face. So who's ready for the showdown? Who's set to live the shame? Do this thing Just this once, and you'll never do it again. The souls at the bus stop all waited to see who'll be the brave one, who'll be set set free. Oh, please, cried the soul of the woman in the car. I'll be forever grateful to whoever you are. For me to expand, for me to grow, I must pass this test. Is there anyone here to please help me with my quest? The silence ripped through those at the stop. Nobody moved, you could hear a pin drop. Then up went a hand, a white, vibrant light. I'll go down to the earth on this decorous night. I'll be the one to shoulder this shame. I'll be the one that you'll get to blame. Oh, God bless you, she cried as she kissed his right hand. You'll be the one who helped me to expand. It is I who thank you, said the wise old one. You'll be my gift, my place in the sun. And with that, they both hopped on the bus to this earth. All would be forgotten at the moment of their birth. Till one day driving home from school, her family was killed by a young drunken fool. Mm. Ah, Wow, I love your poetry. Does that answer your question? Yes, very much. Yes. I love your poetry. You know, I was reading your book, Who's Controlling You? And I love how deep and simple you are. It's just so relatable. And you're not using fancy words to express something that is beyond words, really. You're just using, well, I have to say that you are, you're using spiritual energy, (laughs) the depth of that, of that Mm -hmm. truth. How beautiful, Ian. What's not to love about your expression here in this life, as life itself speaking. Yeah. Ah, yes. And if you come from that place, then then everything makes sense. Mm. 
then yeah. it's not whether you're good or bad. It's what you signed up for. And you signed up to learn lessons, to give lessons. Mm, ah, that's even more beautiful. Ah, yes. Sign up for lessons, to give lessons, right? So within, with that understanding from the, you know, the, as you say, programming, which is so true, the filters, the, the yellow glasses that we wear, mm-hmm. where, where is freedom? Are you able to, to put the, the yellow glass down and, and see ah, the really amazing picture of freedom, what freedom is? And what would that look like? That's, wow, that's a really beautiful, deep question. No one's ever asked me that. Um, freedom, for me, freedom lives beyond our conditioning. When we can get beyond our salty cake, when we can get beyond our thoughts, when we can get beyond our emotions, when we can just, as you said earlier, just surrender to what is and just be. You know, it's the metaphor of, you know, sitting in a, in a little rowboat going down, the, going down a river. Um, everybody is so intent on rowing upstream against the tide, against the the flow. But if you just put the oars into the boat and just allow the river to take you, yes, sometimes it's going to be bumpy. Yes, sometimes you're going to hit a sandbank. But ultimately, the, the river is going to flow where it's going to flow and you're going to end up where you're going to end up. And it's, it's about surrendering to that. And then from that comes ease and flow. And in ease and flow is freedom, mm. in my view. Uh, yes, uh, it resonates with me. Yes, yes, a billion times to that. In love, right, Ian? I, for some reason, the idea of love, it's connected to the deep acceptance and surrender too. It's, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's the only place we can come from and give love if that's a concept to be given or, or demonstrated, expressed. It's from that place of freedom, letting, as you said beautifully, life flow, just flow with life. And, and it mm-hmm. would, it's almost like, you know, some people, I used to say, oh, I trust life to take me where it's supposed to take me. But now yes. th- that trust also dropped. So wait a minute, I am life itself. So mm-hmm. it's almost like it's surrender. It, it is really giving this to life to give it back mm-hmm. it's a return to really it's going back to it's not really really moving forward in a way but it, it might be not even a going back even or as you said beautifully it's 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 the present moment isn't it just be here now it's spaceless it's, it's spaceless and it's timeless and it's still there's really and, nothing happening and and it's interesting but you know everybody is seeking that and unfortunately we seek it through a bong or we seek it through a bottle or we seek it through sex or we seek it we we're, we're looking for that one moment where we just are in peace and you can have that moment if we just let go of all our stuff but in order to get lo- oh, <laughs> you know, just let go of all our programming and our stuff you have to actually become aware. I mean, you just take the con- you mentioned love, right? We have been programmed as to what love is. You know, Hollywood's got our Hollywood version of love, or there's a romantic version of love. And that's, you know, is that what love is? And if you think that that's what love is, or, you know, love for a child, if we think that that's what love is, then that's just a program that we're running. And that version of love is going to get you into all kinds of trouble. You're going to go through relationships. You're you're never going to be able to connect properly because you're always looking for the epitome of, you know, romantic love, uh, you know, St. Valentine's Day, roses. And what what I'm hearing, true love is just the, the energy of love, the spirit of love, the the connectedness of love, the unconditionalness of love. Mm. Mm. You know, when when you're in a deep sleep and your baby is crying, you don't even think twice. You just get up and it, there's, there's just, it's almost, it, it's palpable, it's physical. And mm. that's, that's what connects us all, really. And unfortunately, we think we're separate mm. because we've been taught to mm. be separate because we've been taught mm. different versions of love. Mm. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah, we are definitely coming from mental. We are listening to constructs, yeah, mental construct Correct. when it comes to that. Seeing even other people, you see a lot of wars and all that, you know, discrimination. Mm-hmm. It, n- it never made sense to me, any of it. Never did. I mean, if, if, you know, if, if we love God, then why, you know, why is your God different to my God? It's the same <laughs> right. thing. Yeah. Just because my, the book that I read about God tells me that it's different to the book that you read, but ultimately, source is source. The yes. tree does. The tree and the, um, the the tree and the weed don't argue about uh, where they're getting the energy from. They just take the energy from source, source energy, and you know it's the, it's the old saying. You know our energy. Uh, where our focus goes, our energy flows. And our, fortunately, our focus is spent on our salty cake. And so, therefore, that's exactly where our energy goes. Whereas if you put your energy on thoughts of, of unconditional love, on freedom, on just ease and flow, that's where the energy goes. And that's when your life just turns around. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. So we we have become disconnected uh, from our true nature, from our true self, from the not source through any of fault of our own, but right, through, right, but right, but yeah, through yes. smiles and tears, but through carrot <laughs> yes, and stick. Like, <laughs> yes. You know, I heard the other day somebody said we only mature, or grow when we take responsibility for what we are not responsible for. That resonated true to me as well, coming from that perspective. We are not responsible for so much, right? Well, so, so so tell me then, how does that, what did that mean to you? When, when you say, take responsibility yeah. for what I'm not responsible for, what does that actually mean? Mm, yeah, in my, for my experience, body, mind experience here has been childhood abuse and not being aware of that, that all mm-hmm. those, the feelings I had of disconnection, of sadness, of anger, of fear, mm-hmm. they were all coming from that root, that was the cause of it. I had no idea. So I was not taking responsibility. I, at, to, up to the age of 37, I was acting like a teenager, like an angry mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. and fearful and anxious, depressed. So I had no idea that the, the movement would have been to accept first, recognize, become aware of the cause and then acceptance. And then taking responsibility for my own happiness in that sense, because that's what I was looking for as a body mind, to be peaceful, to be happy, to be joyful again, as I, mm-hmm. I remembered when I was really young. So, yes, that's the way I interpreted that message and resonated true to me. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So can I share a personal story? Yes, yes which please. Which explains. <laughs> yeah. So huh. um, for probably... 55 years, I absolutely, and it sounds terrible, but I hated my father with a passion, okay? And then I went and did some serious work, and I was taken back by a beautiful uh, process that took me back into the womb and my first initial moments and first few years on this planet. And at that time, what I came to realize now, my father had been through the Second World War, and nobody, they didn't talk about PTSD back then, but he obviously struggled with PTSD, and he had low self-esteem, etc. And so, as a baby, I came to the conclusion that when he came to hold me, when he came to touch me, I wasn't ready for that. I wanted mummy. I wanted my mum. He then took that as me rejecting him because of his own low self-esteem, because of all his own programming or whatever was going on with him. So as a result, he started to pull away. Now, as I grew up and I wanted dad and I wanted his love, I kept running towards him, but he was like, no, you rejected me. And he, and so right from that early stage, we had this, we had this thing going on. And it was only when I accepted that, hey, I was responsible because I chose mum, even though I was completely unaware of it. Mm -hmm. And even though it was just a natural thing to do, Mm -hmm. I chose mum. And he, yes, he he also made his choices. But I was was equally as responsible as to the fracture of that relationship as he was. Mm 
And when I came to that conclusion, when I came to that, when I saw that, the next step, forgiveness was just so easy. There was no resistance. It was like, of course, of course. And then I had a whole forgiveness ceremony and what have you and cried. And now I look at my father as my greatest, greatest teacher. And I have so much love and compassion for the man. So when you talk about taking responsibility, correct. So when you talk about taking responsibility for things that you are, quote unquote, unresponsible for, really? You're unresponsible for it? When you start to look at how did I contribute to that? Now, all of a sudden, Mm. now we've got something to talk about. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What's not to love about going deeper and having the courage, right, Ian? Because that takes courage. Oh, it does. Or, 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 or you're just so broken or you're just so desperate. You just say, oh, I got it. I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to go there anyway. Yeah. In despite of fear. <laughs> yeah. Because but the truth is you, you're 100% correct. You have to take responsibility. And the moment you start to take responsibility for your life, and now we come full circle, this is where you start to recognize your results. You have created those results, not the environment, not the other person, not your spouse, not your children, not your bank account, not your job, your boss. You have created that result. Now, how did you contribute to that? What were the behaviors that delivered that result? What were the thoughts? What were the emotions? What were the beliefs? Now you can start to go to work on your salty cake and recognize, ah, that's why, that's why, that's why. And that's when everything starts to change for you. Yes, yes, a billion times to that, to the courage to see and exploring the truth. Not easy, not easy. Mm -mm. But man, I tell you what, I I would not have it any other way. I look back at all the rough times, and boy, 65 years on this planet has been rough. But um, man, from in hindsight, wow, what a ride. What an incredible ride. Yes, yes. And I have to say, I'm sorry for what you went through, Ian. I can, um, yeah, even you saying that kind of uh, it got me to to have that feeling of empathy and compassion. And I don't know if that is a reflection of my own suffering, that when I hear somebody say, you know, you have no idea what I went through, and I hear the sincerity in their voice, then something in me kind of uh, connects to that and relates to it. And then this feeling of empathy arises. Because clearly you've been through a lot yourself and you now recognize it and you recognize the vibration of that and that you're able to tap into that. But I, you know, I, in, I'm, I have so much gratitude for my life and for all the experiences, good and bad, because I would not be. You and I would not be talking right now had I not gone through everything. I would not have the knowledge, the the awareness, the the beingness that I am today if I hadn't gone through all of that. And so for me, it's just a, it's pure grace. It's pure gratitude. You know, I go back to the bus stop. I chose my father. I chose my mother. I chose all the experiences in my life so to get me to where I am right now. I was standing at the bus stop, and so was he. Mm, yes. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you for being you, for being open to life to the extent that you have been. That's truly beautiful. Thank you, Ian. That's a contribution to humanity, for sure. So we're almost at the end. I want to mention that you have written 12 books on sales management and personal transformation. Your latest book is The Emotional Resilience Pathway, A Practical Guide to Cultivate Emotional Resilience, Overcome Fear, and Manifest Your Dream Life. And the other one that you sent to me, Who's Controlling You? The Doris Program. Mm. When I read that, I love the um, I love your poetry and I love the illustration too. It's really beautiful. I love visuals, anything creative. 
And then the only thing that got me thinking was the Doris. I know you had different names there that you can call mm -hmm. it, you know, critic any names, but you, you chose Doris. And I'm like, oh no, that's a female name. <laughs> and uh, being a woman, I was like looking at the, the word, <laughs> the inner critic being portrayed as, um, you know, not so nice uh, mm -hmm. character. But I know it can be any, we, I was just kind of making a kind of, I'm very playful with everything these days. Mm -hmm. And I guess because it's coming from that place of lightness and not taking everything too seriously. And also, yeah, gratitude. That's a big one for me, being grateful mm. for everything, everything, everything. And on, on that on, on that note, I, I'm just so grateful and I really appreciate our time together. I, you know, I, I wasn't sure what, what we were going to get today, but I've absolutely right. thoroughly enjoyed our time. You're uh, an incredibly um, deep human being, a caring human being. And... Mm. The connection today has just been like this. Was, I've actually got goosebumps as I'm talking. Yes, me too. I almost want to cry myself. I became emotional. Yes, it's beautiful too. Um, yes, yeah. What can I say? <laughs> yes. And that's what I, if there is something that I, you know, I often say, that's what I live for. Uh, and I think that's what life, life exists for, right? It's mm. to return to itself. It really feels that way, which is that infinite, beautiful place of surrender and freedom. Um, it's just so beautiful. When we tap, like we have connecting with other human beings this way, that's how I, I get to the glimpse of that in a, in mm. a very real way. That is not Absolutely. abstract at all. It's very real. Yeah, it's, it's just been really, really, I've just, I, I, I feel the connection, which has been fantastic. And, and I, I, I know in your, your, your notes, you, you put down the uh, where people could get access to, I'd love people just to, you know, get the free who's controlling you. Just go online, download it. You can get it for free. It just, it, it will, it will free them. It's just my gift to, to it wasn't even mine. It, it, the book came through me. It is it, not from me. So it's my gift, you know, by all means go free, go and download it and just enjoy it and read it to your kids and read it to your spouse and just, yeah, thank you for that too. Your generosity, which it is, rep it represents, reflects life itself, doesn't it? Abundance. Mm. It doesn't hold back. It's not holding. It's not. It's not owning anything. It's really. It is free in every way. Well, you're not taking anything with you, are you? <laughs> yes. No. We, we're not. Of course not. There's nothing. Right. I mean, isn't that interesting? Everything is so. Ah, it, it's it's here forever. <laughs> what a beautiful place to come from, right? In day to day life, doing businesses and all that, a place of abundance already, of wholeness. That we are not. There's no lacking. We are just kind of sharing, collaborating, exploring together. Which, as you say, it's a beautiful place to 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 live from. And it's a, and the thing is, this I think the key is is it's, it's really achievable for those you listening going well it's all very fine for you guys and you say this and you say that but it's <laughs> so achievable it really is yes because especially where you come from i come from yeah i wrote a book about my own story and how the, the body mind and what we went through did you write mm -hmm. a memoir too ian about your own story uh, i'm busy i'm busy working on my <laughs> magnum opus at the uh, moment it's not uh, a it's not a biography or an autobiography but um, the, the the bus stop that I read is yes. actually the the, mm. the first chapter of the book. So uh, that's that, that's my that's my new piece of art that I'm bringing mm. or contribution that I'm bringing to this planet. Yes, really, truly beautiful and much needed. And I love that the way you write; it's so clear and simple and fun that children can resonate with children. That's mm. ah, that would be incredible too. We we do need children, teenagers to get to get access, you know, to tap into this wisdom, which is their yeah. own. Yeah. So yeah. I will have, uh, of course, the links to your books on the podcast profile notes and I have your website too, iansigel.com. And mm -hmm. oh, are you on Amazon, Ian, all your books? I couldn't find them uh, for some no, reason. No, they're not. And it's not, it's just, um, a, there was an, we had an issue a few years ago and I just never got around to redoing it. My, my life just is so full. So, but if anyone wants a, a copy of the book after they've, uh, or, uh, you know, or a copy, they can just email me at ians at iansegale.com. That's I-A-N-S at 
i a n s e g a i l dot com, and we can we can work it through. But um, that's why I say you know go online, get the have a look, and if, if it really resonates and you want a hard copy, by all means, just uh, let me know and I'll get one to you. We'll work it out. Wonderful to know. So I'll have your email there. And I think the email that you just mentioned is the one that I have too. Let yes. me just make sure it is the same, right, Ian? Okay. Same one, yeah. So I'll have that too. It will be disclosed your website, your email, and how to download, who is controlling you. That will be there too. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much again for your beautiful Thank presence. Thank you. It's really been a pleasure. I've loved, I seriously have loved every minute. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I feel the same way. I have my hand in my heart. As you see in the pictures, the same. I always do that. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Okay. Bye for now, Ian. Take good Bye-bye. care of yourself. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Ian Segale and his work, please visit iansegale.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.